Hi everybody, my name is Mike Messier and I am your director of Wrestling Sun, the movie that you probably just watched. If you haven't watched it yet, I suggest going back to your DVD menu and watching the movie first because here I'm going to give away all the secrets. One of the problems of Wrestling Sun was uh, finding a good editor. I actually went to a total of three guys. Uh, Chip was the third guy, third time was a charm, and uh, Chip turned out to be the guy to make this movie uh, along with me. Uh, why did the other two editors drop out? Uh, I think it was just timing. Uh, the first one was a friend of mine uh, named Rob who uh, wanted to do the project but just didn't have the time to commit to the project. He actually uploaded all the uh, footage of Wrestling Sun onto his computer and then he changed his computer programs and so basically all the time we spent putting the footage onto computer uh, was lost. Um, and then Rob, for whatever reason, uh, just didn't have time to commit to the project. Another guy kind of came. Uh, guy, I met someone through the internet, and that didn't work out. That wasted probably four or five months. And finally, Chip and I met through a mutual friend, and I'll give a shout-out to uh, Bill Voda, who introduced us, and we uh, were able to crank this out uh, rather quickly. Uh, so that was one aspect of the movie. Uh, for those of you who are interested in mini-DV movie making or filmmaking of any kind, I highly suggest uh, good editors to work with. If you're not going to edit the movie yourself, uh, I don't edit my own movies, you really need to find someone compatible and someone who believes in the project to edit the piece. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. And I think that editing, editing is uh, one of the top hardest things to do, um, especially for someone like myself who I want to keep everything in a movie. And you need someone to shake the tree of the movie and keep the coconuts and let all the uh, leaves fall on the ground if you can follow that metaphor. I've had a lifelong interest in professional wrestling. Since I was about nine, I was watching uh, world, what was known as the World Wrestling Federation, uh, namely the Strongbow brothers, Chief J Strongbow and brother Jules Strongbow, Bob Backlund, the Wild Samoans, a uh, special uh, fan of Rocky Soulman Johnson, who later would be the father of The Rock, um, Magnificent Morocco. All these guys were my early favorites. Then I got into Georgia Championship Wrestling, which had a rugged Ronnie Garvin, or the man with the hands of stone, Ronnie Garvin. Uh, I think this movie, Wrestling Son, is more, rep more, more closely resembles an old-school National Wrestling Alliance wrestling federation, something like Georgia Championship Wrestling or Florida Championship Wrestling. Uh, for those wrestling fans out there who know what I'm talking about, these are the, the federations from the 60s, 70s, and early 80s before they got swallowed up by either Jim Crockett Promotions and the NWA or WWF, there was many regional territorial pr promotions throughout the country. And these wrestling federations would have uh, more blood, a little more violence than you would see in the WWF product. And uh, it'd just be more of a haphazard, wild kind of affair than the World Wrestling Federation. The character that I play in this movie, uh, Little Jack, is actually named after a very obscure piece of wrestling history. Sorry for just spitting on you right there. But uh, young Jack Von Erich, who was the, uh, the oldest uh, of, the wrestling, of the Von Erich family, uh, he never wrestled because he was only six when he was electrocuted in his backyard. Uh, for those of you know, who know what I'm talking about, the Von Erich family was a family of wrestlers who, unfortunately, I think they had three or four sons. Uh, let's see, Carrie, Mike, um, David, and Chris all met young deaths, uh, but there was actually a, a fifth Von Erich who died at a young age, and that was Jack. So uh, Jack Von Erich is the namesake of young Jack, the wrestling son, the son of John Cronus and Cassie Strader. I was uh, acquaintances with uh, Cassie Strader, or Val is her real name, and uh, I told Val that I had this idea for a wrestling movie, and it was... It was, a whole, it was a piece that wasn't quite what we saw in Wrestling Sun. It was a piece that had a love triangle between the main character, uh, was a, a female wrestler, her, her husband, who she was getting divorced from, and, believe it or not, Smudge Baby, who was a very obscure character in the movie. So I had this whole complicated storyline, which I don't really want to get into because I would like to make that movie someday. Um, and I was trying to, trying to cast a male lead. Some of the wrestlers uh, that I thought of to play the lead in my movie were uh, Christopher Daniels and Steve Carino. Uh, once again, for you wrestling fans, you know who they are, but for those who don't know, uh, Christopher Daniels is a very charismatic wrestler. He does kind of a Marilyn Manson cult leader gimmick, 
as well as wrestling as Curry Man in Japan, a wrestler who uh, wrestles for the benefit of curry, the powder. And uh, Steve Carino is a throwback to the old school 80s wrestler. He has dyed blonde hair, and he likes to bleed a lot. So I had these two guys in mind to play my lead. I tried to email them through the internet. Well, it turns out the whole time that Cassie Strader, Val, who is this uh, local female uh, wrestling persona, valet and wrestler, she told me that her real-life boyfriend was John Cronus, who uh, wrestling fans will know. John Cronus received a modicum of fame in the uh, 1997 era as one half of the Eliminators. It was John Cronus and Perry Saturn, the tag team known as the Eliminators, who were a very, very good tag team. And John mentioned some of those days in the movie when the scene with Ruckus. Me and Cassie made a road trip to Massachusetts, and we, uh, and there John Cronus invited me into his home. For me, this was really cool. I had met John a couple of times in the East, uh, Extreme Championship Wrestling days, but John Cronus, who, who never really met me before, except one time I found myself helping him put a bandage on his head in a, in a men's bathroom after a wrestling show after he had done a lot of bleeding. But John Cronus invited me into his home. Uh, he introduced me to his brother and his nephew. He made me a chicken dinner. And uh, I was really amazed that this guy that was so famous, um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to pick on John, but he was really living kind of in a state of, um, a state beneath him, you know, a, a wrestler who I admire so much. Uh, he, was, he was bagging groceries at the local um, grocery place. And I really felt like this sucks because John Cronus is such a talented wrestler. He turned out to be a really nice guy, a really charismatic guy, and I was like, wow, you know, I hope this movie uh, does something for me, but I also hope it does something for him. And um, he really has, a, if you know who Mick Foley is, the wrestler who also uh, writes books, John Cronus to me has a very Mick Foley-esque uh, way about him, and I mean that in the, the highest uh, sense of the word. He, he's a very um, fun guy, very warm guy, very open guy, very honest guy about himself. Um, you saw that in the movie when he admits that he can't read or write. Uh, John has severe dyslexia, which I have a little bit of, so I can relate to that. And John was just a terrific guy. Uh, Edith did a great job. She caught um, one of the early scenes in the movie of John going back to the dressing room with his head, and then the old man says, uh, you're going to make the movie. You use uh, the ketchup. <laughs> hey, you know how to make a movie with the ketchup. Uh, that was uh, camera number two. Edith Pires caught that on tape, so... She really did a good job as well, and she also, uh, as you see a little bit of, she put up with Diamond Dave Donovan's uh, advances, so to speak. Diamond Dave was a lot of fun. Diamond Dave uh, is a guy who's never really liked me very much, um, and I don't know if he's, you know, he's pulling a rib, as they say in the wrestling business, if he's pulling my leg, or if he just really hates my guts, but he was cooperative in uh, the movie. He did act like himself, and, uh, you know, he, he had fun as much as he could, and I think uh, all the other wrestlers participated, but I got to say that there was a lot of tension in the air that night because I was walking around in the smudge baby dress, uh, hate to ruin it for you, but I was the smudge baby character, and, um, you know, I, I at times was looking over my shoulder expecting one of these wrestlers to clobber oh, me. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. Matter of fact, I was sort of balls mahoney joined the Blue World Order. You could have been Blue Balls Mahoney. Put that on me, please. I am not talking to someone. Goodbye. Um, but some of them, as you see, like Ruckus, uh, didn't seem to mind, you know, because this movie had the approval of John Cronus and Cassie Strader, and they pulled a lot of weight in the dressing room. So because I was with them, this movie got made. A part of the interesting aspect of this film is that John Cronus and Cassie Strader were actually fighting in real life. They were actually going through a split up, and that's why this movie took a turn from my uh, fictional narrative uh, outline into this reality type of movie. Um, they really were having couple difficulties. Yeah, no, he's not he's been a in New Hampshire working at the motion. You never went anywhere else. So he's been to Mexico. He's been to Puerto Rico. And I, I don't know the state of their relationship right now, but I know that this was a tough night for them because John was actually going to uh, move out of uh, state, and Cassie wasn't that happy about it. So some of the, uh, the bickering going on between the two, when Cassie says... Uh, you know, your father's a fucking alcoholic. You know, like, she really means it. She's really pissed off. So it was interesting for the movie. 
I have made uh, another short film, which we're going to hope to include in this DVD, called uh, My Sit Down with the Sandman, with the uh, professional wrestler known as the Sandman. Uh, my left hand right now is getting very excited because he gets to move around. He's been holding the microphone the whole time, so I'm getting used to that. But the Sandman and I did this little bit, bit um, and uh, the Sandman was a cool guy. Um, I've done ring announcing in Rhode Island and the uh, southern Massachusetts area for a number of years. And I just wanted to make my wrestling movie because I've been a fan of wrestling movies, specifically from the 70s. Uh, you might have seen, for you guys out there, I Like to Hurt People, starring The Sheik, about Detroit Championship Wrestling in the late 70s. Uh, they have that great theme song, I Like to Hurt People. You know, it's, it's crazy. Some of these movies, um, uh, I'm trying to think of them. Uh, wrestling Queen is a very obscure one, but uh, I think that's uh, Vivian Vachon was in that. There was a uh, wrestling movie called All the Marbles with, um, who was the guy with the crooked eyebrow from Columbo? He played a wrestling manager of a female tag team. Uh, very attractive uh, women in that movie. And um, I've always just had a, and there's another one called The Wrestler from the AWA, Vern Gagne and his guys, Billy Robinson, Dusty Rhodes, Dick Murdoch, and a young Ric Flair. And, and, and Ed Asner actually plays the lead in the movie uh, The Wrestler. So all these movies I would recommend. Uh, the Wrestler, Wrestling Queen, I Like to Hurt People. And uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. And I just wanted to make a movie that kind of captured that aesthetic because more or less, besides the explosion of the World Wrestling Entertainment slash World Wrestling Federation slash World Wide Wrestling Federation, whatever you want to call it, there is always going to be a need, I hope, for local, you know, semi-pro or professional wrestling, which doesn't have a lot of money in it. So I hope that this uh, Wrestling Sun movie fills a niche. The, rest, the Wrestling uh, Son movie was originally going to be called Wrestling Son Dash Memories of My Parents' Divorce. But in the um, editing context, it became clear that we weren't really going to clearly state that these two um, people, John Cronus and Casey Strader, were going to get divorced. It, it, we want to leave it more ambiguous. Um, that was a choice by Chip, my editor, and he really didn't have footage that clearly stated that they were going to get divorced. So, you know... Why have a title that miss uh, that directs you in a way that's not necessarily true? So that was a decision to just keep the movie more ambiguous, and it's called Wrestling Son. We had two great people, two good friends of mine, who I have to apologize to because they were filmed. They really worked hard in this movie, but were not used. Uh, Wendy Payne and Lenny Schwartz, at one time or another, both played a role called the therapist. It seems you had a difficult childhood. But so did many. Don't you want to do anything else with your life? All you do is talk, talk, talk. But you, you never listen to what it is you're saying. Don't you, don't you want anything else, wrestling son? It seems to me that you've, you've come from an abusive family. Your parents beat you with words and steel chairs. You and Oedipus would make a great tag team. The tag team champions of, of guilt, anxiety. And then I filmed it on myself with um, Wendy in, in Massachusetts of a therapist who was talking to the adult version of the wrestling son and guiding him through therapy. And that goes, through, goes back to the title of Wrestling Son, Memories of My Parents' Divorce. Broken tables and ruined dreams. You remind me of Maurice Sendax's Max. You re truly did run where the wild things are. Except, you had no warm dinner to come home to. Where did you rest your weary head? I actually wrote an 80-page storyline for World Wrestling Entertainment, which uh, I don't know if they've ever taken a look at, even though I've sent it to them several times, and I've given copies to Ric Flair and Mick Foley, uh, just to get this off my chest. I've come up with a storyline for professional wrestling, namely World Wrestling Entertainment, that I think is better than anything that they've uh, presented since WrestleMania 3, and I don't think they've taken a fair look at it. So that's something that's uh, stimulated me, and I'm still willing to share my ideas with Vince McMahon or whomever, his children that uh, help run the Federation, or his son-in-law, Triple H, but I don't know if uh, they'll give me a fair shake. Um, some of the frustration in professional wrestling with professional wrestlers is the um, the fact that Vince McMahon almost has a monopoly on the wrestling business, there's very few opportunities for pro wrestlers to get paid. Uh, there's the NWA TNA group run by Jeff Jarrett and his father, Jerry Jarrett, but there's really not a lot of paid positions in professional wrestling. That's why uh, Cassie Strader in this movie says, 
Uh, your father fucking probably get $25 for all that shit. Well, she's right. You know, he probably did or got less because uh, the independent wrestler is going to bleed for you. He's going to sweat for you and he's going to get hurt for you. And he's not going to get paid a whole lot of money. It's, it's similar to the uh, struggling comedian or the struggling actor who will work literally for peanuts. Or not literally for peanuts. You won't throw peanuts in their mouth. But they will not get paid a whole lot of money to do what they do. They do it for the glory and they do it for that slight window of opportunity that exists uh, with World Wrestling Entertainment or with NWATNA or with Wrestling in Japan. With me, I'm looking forward to being a filmmaker. I'm still uh, struggling. I host a public access show in Rhode Island called The Mike Messier Show. Myself and a friend of mine, Kevin Anderton, are making the best of Mike Messier DVD, which we plan to send to networks and so forth. Uh, a piece like this, Wrestling Sun, will most likely play on my public access TV show for free in Rhode Island. If you don't live in Rhode Island, well, the only way to see my stuff is probably getting it through the Internet somehow. Um, but I'm, I'm someone that I think I do have the potential to be a creative person involved in world wrestling entertainment or involved in uh, specifically my own filmmaking and making films with others. I'm going to wrap things up. I want to thank you, the audience, for watching Wrestling Son. And I want to thank uh, Chip for doing the camera. And right now we're going to switch the mic and I'm going to let Chip Van Dyke talk to you about editing the movie Wrestling Son. Thanks a lot. And as Bill After One said, we'll see you at the matches.